Amen. We're chained to people. We're chained to situations. Sometimes we're chained on our job. Yeah. All around us, there are folks who are against us yeah. and trying to hold us back. How, how, can I, how can I make this plain? Well, there's, there's, there's sometimes there are folks who are holding on to us in our lives, in our relationships, who, who are holding us back from what we God wants us to become. And they're trying to act like they're holding us up. How do you, when I was a kid, this, this, this is how I explain it. When I was a kid, uh, I used to love to fly kites. You know, fly a kite? Yeah. People don't fly kites anymore. That's, uh, that's old time. Yeah. But we used to love to fly kites. And one of the things we would do is we would get the kite up. When I was a little boy, I used to think that it was the people who were holding on to the string that was keeping the kite up. Because I noticed that when they were trying to get the kite up, you know how you get the kite up? You, you hold it behind you and you run. And you keep running until the kite go up. Y'all ain't got food no kite in here. You keep running until the kite goes up. And I used to think, man, I used to think, wow, I want to be able to hold that kite up. And then I see the kite keep going and gets higher and higher and higher. And I used to think that the person who had the string was the one who was holding the kite up. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And when I dropped the string, the kite kept going. And here I am running behind the string, trying to get a hold to the kite so the kite won't get away. You know, I said, you know, there's something else holding that kite up. And I found out that it was the wind that was underneath the wings of the kite holding the kite up. And what I was doing by holding the string was holding the kite back. The Bible says that if you call on the Lord, he'll show up and the chains and the strings don't fall off. And you go to a higher height and a higher level in God. And that, that was free. That was free. I, I just want to share with you that if you call on the Lord on the name of the Lord, prayer will bring you out. Are y'all praying with me? But not only that, the Bible tells us, it teaches us here. That not only, not only was Peter, uh, did, 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 did the chains fall off, but the Holy the Bible says that when, when God showed up, uh, uh, the Bible says that his chains fell off, and, 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 and the, 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 the Bible says that, that the, the angel woke him up, got him up, and then said, follow me. Y'all in the text? That's right in the text. He had to wake him up. Then, then he had to get him up. And then he said, follow me. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if the Lord's going to bring you out. Now, one of the things you need to see in the text is, is he told him, wake up. Yeah. Then he told him, get up. Yeah. Then he told him, follow me. Yeah. And the Bible says that Peter was, he got up, he woke up, and he got up and followed the angel of the Lord. Yeah. But he was thinking that there was a big door. Oh, to the entrance of the jail. And, and even though I'm following the presence of the Lord, I'm worried about how I'm going to open the door when I get to the door of the jail. I'm, 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 he's saying, how am I going to get through that big iron gate? But the Bible says, as he woke up and he got up and he followed the presence of the Lord, by the time they got to the obstacle too, to the door, the door opened by itself. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Man. The Bible says that when they got there, the door was already open. But he never would have gotten to the blessing of his freedom and his emancipation if he first hadn't woke up, got up, and followed the angel of the Lord. And all I want to tell you on my way home is, is that a lot of us who are waiting on God, we've been praying and we've been asking him to bless us and we're waiting to see the blessing. Well, don't wait to see the blessing because all you need to do is to wake up. Y'all yeah. don't hear me what I'm saying. Then you need to get up and then you need to follow God's purpose and his plan for your life. 
and you will find that the obstacles that are in your way will be removed by the time you get there. Yeah. I gotta take my seat, I gotta take my seat. But the Bible says that Peter, on his way to follow the Lord, when he got to the biggest obstacle he thought was in the way of his freedom, when he got there, it was already open. And I'm talking to somebody in here right now. You got some things that you know God has put on your heart to do. You're trying to get your education. You're trying to get out of poverty. You're trying to get your relationship together. You're trying to get your life and your family back together and get it straight. And you have some obstacles that are in your way. Don't you look at the obstacles, baby. What you need to do is to wake up, then get up, and then follow the Lord. Because if you wake up and you get up out of that situation and follow God, you'll find that he'll remove any obstacle that's in your way. But some of us are waiting to see the blessing before we wake up. But let me tell you, don't you wait. You better go and wake up and get up now and follow God. Don't you wait to follow God to see the blessing. The blessing is that if you just follow the Lord, when you get the way you're going, the blessing will be waiting on you. Oh, I'm going to take my seat. I got to go there. But I want to tell you one thing. One thing I learned about following God, until I got enough faith to follow his word and to follow his precept, I couldn't see the blessing. But once I started moving, in y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God says like this, I want you to wake up and get up and follow me first. Then I'll show you the blessing. Because you can always depend on God to show you the blessing. You can always depend on God to show you the resources. You can always depend on God to show you the money. If money is what you need, you can always depend on God to open up a way so that you can make a way out of a way out of no way. You can always depend on God, but God can't always depend on us to wake up, to get up, and to follow him. And so God says, I don't want to be opening doors if you ain't going to never get there. You get up first. You follow me first. And then when you get to the door, I'll open it up. Anybody ever had a door open? He'll make a way out of no way. He'll, he'll open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. When you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. He just wants you to get to where the door is open. Situation in my life been shown over and over again. That when I have enough faith to trust in God and do it his way, the obstacles that I thought couldn't be moved, he always moves. And he does it suddenly. That thing that's been holding you back, God will move it suddenly if you just call on his name. And there may be somebody in here today, as you stand on your feet, might be somebody in here today who's stuck in a condition of enslavement and stuck in a condition of bondage. But I want you to know that God has already made a way for you to be set free. He's already opened the door. But in order for you to go through the door, you've got to, you've got to put your faith and your trust in Him. And the Bible says that Peter started thinking he was he was going through a trance and he said, this is too good to be true. I can't believe that all of these good things are happening to me. I can't believe how God has opened the door and made a way. I can't believe how he set me free when I thought I was on my way to a burial. Come on, somebody. But God opened the door and set me free. He took the chains off of me and he opened my way. God is here today. He wants to open the door for you today. He wants to set the captain free. No matter what you're bound up in, no matter what you're caught up in, God is able to open, move the chains, wake you up, pick you up, and lead you out. If you would only put your faith and your trust in him. The Bible says that anybody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, that he'll open the door for you to receive relationship with God the Father through the blood of the everlasting covenant, through the blood of Jesus Christ, God has opened the way for you. And my, my, my invitation to you, if you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ publicly. You've never, you 
never got up and you never followed him. You never come down the aisle. You've never done this. You never accepted Jesus Christ publicly. You never asked him to become Lord and Savior of your life publicly. I invite you to come and receive Jesus Christ right now, today, as your Lord and Savior. Don't wait for the blessing. Trust that the blessing is on the way. But you have to first, by faith, trust in Jesus Christ. And all that Jesus has laid in store for you, everything that God has purpose and plan for your life, you can realize it. The obstacles that are standing in your way won't keep you if God is leading you out. If you're here today, will you come? Will you accept Jesus publicly? Will you come as a candidate for baptism to receive the Lord as your Savior? Won't you come today? Is there another? Will you come? Right now, you're not a part of a church, a local church. You're not like Peter. Peter was part of the church in Jerusalem. He had folk praying for him. When the Bible says that he wasn't praying, he was sleeping, but they were praying. If you're here and you want a church family, folks who go to bat for you, folks who call on the Lord for you, folks who are walking with you and walk alongside you so that you become the person of God that he wants you to be. You need a church home. You've accepted Christ. You've been baptized. But you're not a part of a local church. Come on. We want you to be a part of Blessed Great. This is the invitation to you. Will you come? On your Christian experience, will you come? Come on. We want you. We want you to be a part of us. We're going to help you in this walk. Is there one? Is there another? Will you come today? He'll break it. If you're waiting to break the chains yourself, if you're waiting to set yourself free, it's never going to happen. You need Jesus. You need the presence of the Lord in your life. And the only way you can have that is through Jesus Christ. Will you come today? Is there one?